good afternoon, families and friends, loved ones, those that are on social media, those that have, those of us that have been keeping up with this minister leadership class. You know, we are going in, we are going over the governing ministries of the fivefold and other ministries that people don't even pay attention to anymore. Amen. Amen. We dealt with uh, uh, the fivefold ministry last week and the calling that comes with the fivefold. Amen. Amen. The commission is calling and they are commissioned. You're called and then you're sent, but God has to prepare you to send you out. Amen. Amen. So today we're dealing with uh, two different segments, the call of leadership. For those that are in leadership, you have to know who is calling you. I'm going to read something to you real quick. Most of the divine encounters throughout the Bible have related directly to God's call on men and women of God. For the Christian leader, the call of God is, is the point of revelation. Everybody say revelation. revelation. The personal foundation for ministry. The same is true for every Christian, through, though not every ministry requires as much time or energy as governmental ministry. And y'all are in the governmental ministry, okay? Okay. Well, first goal and identity as Christian is to know Christ and to serve the body of Christ. Your job is not to serve nobody else. The government of this world, the politician of this world, can stay out of the politics. Your job is just, the only politicking is the kingdom. Amen? Don't let people pull you in to Republican, Democratic, and all these different parties. This is not what Jesus is came for. Amen? In, in this regard, much of your individual personal identity as a Christian comes from your calling and ministry from God. As you give your life away to Christ and his church, you will discover it. We will open the mysteries of God calling. and It will explain what God calling is to a believer and how God uses the calling as part of his plan to build a church. If you have not heard God's calling for your life yet, it will help you discover God's calling. If you have received your calling, then... You learn more about how it it established your your place in the body of Christ. But even Christ came not to be ministered unto, but what? But to minister, Amen. Mm -hmm. And you have ministers in the body of Christ now that thinks they are over Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't even teach; they're not teachable. Amen. Mm -hmm. And to give his life as a ransom for what? For many. With that same spirit, come on, everybody, say, with that same spirit. That same See, spirit. that's the spirit we should have, that we're willing to lay down our life. Or brothers, amen? amen. <clears throat> but everybody now, every minister now wants to prolong his life. Amen? amen. Nobody want to lay down their life no more. With that same spirit, let's begin the process, process of discovering God's assignment for each of us in the body of Christ. Through the years, numerous theologians have pondered, discussed, and taught on the subject of the call of God. Magazines have published countless articles and testimonies on the necessity of God's call. Every Christian must be called to a specific ministry. Amen? Mm -hmm. It is the governmental ministry, however, because of the highly visible public nature, which are most often coveted. Everybody say coveted. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing about the body of Christ where the problem is is covetousness. Amen? Amen? Mm -hmm. You are called to your own ministry. Stop going into other people's lane. Amen? Amen. And it said, coveted and pursued without God's calling. That's why we're having it tonight. Because there's so many people that are in roles. They don't understand the, the, the difference between evangelizing and pastoral. Uh, the pastoral people don't understand the difference between an elder and a pastor, and a bishop, and an apostle. Uh, the body of Christ do not know nothing. They don't know their identity. All they just hear these names, and nobody really know what comes, what's the responsibility of that position or title. Amen? Amen. And they covered it and pursued without God's call. And they're not called. Amen? Amen. you got to be careful that you're not called, but you're still running. Amen. Fortunately, many leaders over the years have managed to enter positional ministries without receiving a divine call from God. Can I say it again? Yes. To enter positional ministries 
without receiving a divine call from God. Because your bishop says so, your mother said so, your grandmother said so. You had this dream, amen? Dr. King had a dream too. You saw what they, what they did to him. Amen? Don't let a dream fool you. Get a, you get a dream that you lay hands on somebody. Suddenly you get up tomorrow. I'm prophet and so-and-so. <laughs> Amen? Because you had a dream because you laid hands on somebody. Got to be careful. They, Satan gives dreams too, right? Who they, these people have discovered that victory in the ministry hinges from the initial call from God. Some entered governmental ministry in presumption. Remember that, amen? amen? Some entered with innocent and noble motives. Remember that word, motives. Amen? Mm -hmm. The Bible said many are called and chosen or what? Few. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and, and I hate that people that wants the Broadway because the Broadway comes with the cars, the houses, the, the luxury, all that comes with the broad path. Amen? Because Satan is going to allow you to have all these riches. So guess what? You'll have all those riches. Not saying that God doesn't want us wealthy, because the Bible says that, beloved, I wish above all that you be prosperous. Amen? Amen. But the word prosper mean, mean to be in good health. Amen? Amen. As you're so prosper, because what is good to have money and you dine with uh, cancer, right? Yeah. Or some kind of uh, disease. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Presumption. People people going into the ministry presumptuously. I and mean, we got to be careful of that. that. You know, you didn't call yourself. You just got up and you heard a few sermons and you say, oh, I want to be a preacher because somebody told me I preach good. Somebody told me I could teach good. Amen? You want to compete with, with your pastor. Amen? Oh. And you don't even know if they go to hell. They just sound good. Some entered with innocent and noble motives, others in the same way they would enter any other profession in the world. So that's what the, that's what it has become now in the church. It's a profession to be a pastor. Amen. The pastor gets a salary. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And get a big salary. It's like a CEO job. Amen. You got pastors that are making six figure incomes. When Jesus was what? In a Paul had to struggle. Sometimes Paul had nowhere to live. Peter then was running for all over the city, nowhere to lay their head. Come on, somebody. These were true apostles. You know, here these apostles now sitting somewhere in the hill, smoking a cigar and drinking Hennessy and say they're living the, the marvelous life. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. They don't have no devils messing with them. That's, that's a problem with me. If the devil ain't messing with you no more, something wrong with you. Because the devil even messed with Jesus. <laughs> right? Many scriptures in the Old Testament describe the phenomenon of so-called leadership. That's what we're going to deal with today. Two kinds of leadership. Without the call of God, every passage comes to the same conclusion, going forth on their own initiative, without the Lord sending them. These men failed. The Bible says that if he doesn't build the house, that you build it in vain. Your ministry is in vain. Your time, your energy, your preaching, your teaching, your word of knowledge, your word of wisdom, these prophetic unctions that you get every five minutes, all that is in vain if God is not giving it to you. We just sit there and we just think about stuff. The mind is a powerful weapon. Amen? Amen. Satan will get into this mind and have you think stuff, see stuff, hear stuff, and none of it is God. I've been watching some of these stuff on Dateline, and half the people that kill somebody in the house, they said, well, a voice told me. I've heard people say, well, God told me. You know? God is going to tell you to kill your whole entire family? We have a problem with that, right? The book of Jeremiah develops the subject of God's call very clearly. His warnings come at a pivotal time in Israel's history, when the remnant of Judah is threatened with captivity in Babylon. Jeremiah speaks out against what? The false prophets. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I, God was putting in my spirit today 
And I wanted to call my baby brother and the devil don't want me to share this with him. So I could see what, what, you know, because he may take it as a rebuke. God said, don't worry about it because, you know, a lot of times we, we want the lime life. We want to follow the prophetic those that are running all over the city, having these conferences and the, and the, and the TV ministry. And we want to be seen. But these prophets were not seen. Jeremiah was not a seen prophet. These prophets were hidden. Amen. But now these all these prophets want to have this 911 number that you could call them, you know, when you could supposed to be calling straight to heaven. Come on, somebody. So they 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 cut, they made it, they just said, Well, excuse me, I'm we don't need the middleman no more. Because remember, Jesus was intercessor between what? God and man. Now the prophet doesn't move, box Jesus out of the way. And we don't need him no more. <laughs> Just call me at 919-908-5506. Call Miss Cleo. Oh. Amen? That's what we're doing in the church. Y'all may not like this teaching, but you need it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And every prophet he did. Jeremiah speaks out against the false prophets. The spiritual leaders of Israel were leading the country to believe a lie. That God won't punish his people for disobedience. Come on, that's what the church is telling you. Well, you know, just just do this, just do this. God is merciful. God, you know, and we know that God is merciful, but God is also God of justice, the God of vengeance, the God of wrath. Amen. But they don't want to teach you that side. They want to tell you what, you know what, you know, God is God will just keep on letting you just do this, do what you want to do. That's what they did in the time of Noah. Amen. Amen. I bet you the false prophets had lied to them. They were all that Noah said. You had prophets there was telling them, don't listen to that fool. Ain't no rain coming. It ain't rained since when. Why are you going to believe him? Amen? These prophets grew in favor by telling the people what they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. That's what we have right now. Nothing changed from the time of Jeremiah. The same tickle my fancy. Tell me about the house. Tell me about the car. Tell me about the jet. Yeah. Amen. Tell me about the Bentley, the Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the Lincoln Continental, the pretty wife with the Coca-Cola shape. <laughs> the man that I'm going to meet when I go to the, the beach. Amen. Mm -hmm. I remember some fool told my children's mom that she's going to be married to a man with blue eyes. Oh. I feel sorry for her if she believed that. Amen? Wow. These prophets grew in favor by telling the people what they wanted to Maybe she wanted to hear that she's going to marry some man with blue eyes because naturally if his guys is blue, he's going to be white and he's probably going to have a little money, right? <laughs> but everything that got blue eyes don't mean you don't live in a trailer. They got some people that a yeah. trailer trash that got blue eyes. Yeah. Amen. But if the devil telling you you're going to be married to somebody blue eyes, first you're going to think, oh, God, my God, he's going to be white and he's going to be handsome. And he, well, the Jesus eyes weren't even blue. Lie. Lies. Look at good times. They had the black Jesus with the big old afro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even JJ then was telling us, don't fall for the okie doke, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I need some coffee. <laughs> so these prophets grew in favor by telling the people what they want to hear, directly contributing to Judah's disaster. Yet they were so popular, hear the word, so popular, that what they wanted so popular that even after the captivity, the people continued to listen to them. Oh. Sound like some of the stuff we had here at one time. All the stuff we saw. And, you know, sometimes we were like, well, we just want to give that prophet a chance. Give one more chance. They, they don't lie 500 times, but we're just going to give him one more chance. If, if It's going to be a true prophecy this time. Who says it clearly? Maya Angelou. Right? That what, she, what my Angelo said. Y'all know the, the real the saying, what she said? Oh, okay. People, if they show you what they are. 
That's what they really are. Don't be trying to figure it out. Don't try to go in your Bible and pray and try to ask God to change their heart and change their mind. You're wasting all the time. Some people are already set for hell. They have sold out to the devil. You know how many times it takes to beat yourself up praying for somebody? Then the Lord said, uh-uh. I'm going to deal with them, but you still want to pray for them. I'm not praying for nobody that God said don't pray for. Then I'm getting in God's way. Right? You got to be a, a, a prophet that listens. Or you're going to fall in like what happened with the young prophet and the old prophet. Did y'all read the story? When God told the young prophet to go to Bethel, he said, when you get there, don't eat nothing, don't drink nothing, don't have dining with nobody, don't fellowship with nobody. And, and the old prophet comes and lies to the young prophet, tell him to come home with him. Then he eats dinner with him, and after that, then he tells him, didn't God not tell you not to eat? See, that's a setup. And the devil ain't changed his, his, uh, what he's doing, Amen. See, these prophets grew in favor, even after the captivity. The people continued to listen to them, hoping for an early end to captivity. My God. So listen what it says in Jeremiah 23, 21 and 32. Hear what the Lord says. I sent them not, neither commanded them. Therefore, they shall not prosper, these people are. See, you know, there's a lot of people that seem to be prosperous prospering because even in uh, uh, Psalms 37 the Bible says even fret not for evil doers mm -hmm. even though they what grow as a green bay tree oh. they spread out there's a lot of them spreading out like a green bay tree a lot of them all over different ministries have spread their wings but the Lord said I sent them not come on somebody right. I said I did not send them I did not choose them Amen. So you got to be careful that you gather yourself around people that are not sent. Because if you are sent, then guess what? They're coming in your fold to what? To stand in your position. Because they're not sent, but they come as thieves. Because the Bible says Satan comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So he's not coming to uh, 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 bring uh, the works of the many. He's coming to bring conflict. Conflict. These are what these minist these ministering prophets bring conflict. So God can't bless the house. So the Lord said to Jeremiah, I said them not, neither commanded them. In verse 27, 15, he said, I have not sent them. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now the Lord had not sent thee. Mm -hmm. But though makest the people to trust in a lie, like you know, not not putting nothing bad on Jake's or whatever, but now we saw that on national TV when Tyler Perry laid hands on Jake. Mm -hmm. Suddenly he's talking in tongues, and we thought to say, "Oh, Tyler Perry's a prophet." <laughs> yeah, everybody was saying Tyler Perry's a man of God, and you know. Yeah, on YouTube. They turned around and blessed Jake a million dollars. And everybody was like, oh, Tyler Perry is a prophet of God. So you got to be careful. The Lord said, I have not sent them. And make us the people to a trust in a lie. Now we are the ones who are going to trust in a lie because we saw it on TV. Mm -hmm. And we're going to say, what's good for Jake is good for me because if if Jake, if, 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 if Jake is a well-known person, so everybody's going to accept that. If he laid his hands on Jake, then he could lay his hands on any minister and then turn around and give me a million dollars. He don't have to lay his hands on me because I don't want that Medea spirit following me all over the place. You might wake up one day and see Jake's wearing some skirt coming to church. Because guess what? He laid his hands on him. He done gave him the Medea spirit. Come on, church. Right. <laughs> he done gave him the Medea spirit. Y'all don't even, nobody even pick up on that. 
The Bible said, lay hands on no man. What? Suddenly. That was a suddenly right there. Did we not see it suddenly happen? Somebody missing there. Somebody need this class. They prophesied falsely. I have not sent them, said the Lord. Jeremiah 29. They have seen lying and vain divination, said the Lord, and the Lord had not sent them. They have made others the hope that they would confirm the word. I can't confirm some of the things that happened here. I can't confirm. The Bible said Jesus confirmed with the apostles through what? Signs, miracles, and wonders. Confirmed with them. He worked with them. What have we seen in the last days, body of Christ? What have we seen working more than gibberish? A lot of talking, a lot of talking about, I see this, I see that. You ain't seen nothing. And most of the time they prophesy, they tell you something about themselves. Blind wonders, I call it. But God rejects false leadership, okay? Let me, let me read something to you. In the Old Testament, it was a very serious offense to pursue upon the office of any ministry without a divine call. If a man was called to be a priest, he dare not presume upon the king's office. But that's what we have now in the body of Christ. You know, Jesus was what? Prophet, priest, and king. The apostles carry the same title as Jesus. That's why he said, I'm, I appointed them as apostles. They carry the same title as Jesus. Prophet, priest, and king. They walk into the ambassadorial anointing. Mm -hmm. Amen? Then apostles got respected them because apostles could go wherever they want to go. Now they're kind of hindered now by the bishopry because there is a war in the body of Christ that bishops are over apostles because the Roman Catholic Church had created that enigma. I thank you, Holy Ghost. Because Rome always want to be the mother church. Come on, somebody. Rome is always want to be. All they made, the, all these movies, it's always some demonic movie. You know, always has to do with yeah. the church. Yeah. It's never a black church that we see some demon acting up. It's always in the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So they tell you these things by the exorcist. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Right. And a lot of them need some of that um, of a spirit exercise out of them. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. I ain't going to put that out there. Y'all know the spirit that them bishops carry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I can't find myself wearing a skirt too long. I think Tyler Perry laid his hands on a lot of them a long time ago. The Bible said, men of renown. Mm. Oh, that alone. <laughs> this ain't nothing new. But the Bible said, men of renown. Right. Some have crept in unaware. Men of renown. This ain't nothing new. They've been doing this. These little slick spirits always have been in the church. But God rejects them. But we embrace them. Why embrace what God has said I have nothing to do with? That's why I'm teaching these classes. Let's finish. If a man was called to be a priest, he dare not presume upon the king's office. If a man was called to be the king, the priest's office was off limits to him. Such presumption always resulted in the judgment of the Lord. No man ever entered in the presence of the Lord without a divine commandment. God called Moses to come to see the burning bush. You know, sometimes we have to be careful. And that's when we, the enemy gets us into a prayer closet and we want to see God so bad. We want to en have an encounter with God because Moses had one. Moses did not go looking for the encounter with God. God came looking for Moses. So sometimes when you are in the presence of prayer and fasting, you could, in uh, what's the word? conjure up. Come on, somebody. You could conjure up a demonic spirit mm -hmm. because Satan is what? Mm -hmm. Angel of light. Yes. And he could, you know, because the anointing will fall upon you. Let Jesus said, stay in the book of Acts. He said, stay, wait for it. Yes. But if you go run looking for it, then you'll pick up anything on the way. Mm. So we got to be careful. Amen. 
God called Moses to come to see the burning bush. The Lord said, take off your shoes for the place where you stand is holy ground. Mm. Amen? Amen. Exodus 3 and 5. Mm. God ordained the high priest once a year on the day of atonement to come into his presence in the holy of holies. For a man to take this upon himself was literally to take his life into his own hands. And that we're doing in the body of Christ now. We just simply want to prove ourselves to the, my brother and sister. Be real. You want to prove how anointed we are, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna meet God. Bless me. Mm -hmm. See, Jacob, Jacob wrestled with God till the morning but that was God's plan. Mm -hmm. That was not Jacob's plan. God is the one who set the angel there. Jacob did not go looking for the angel. So when God does that, then it, you're in God's will. Amen? Mm -hmm. If you go looking, you know, I, I'm, I must walk around house of power all day, all night, and hopefully that God send an angel. I'm looking for trouble. I'm not going to walk around and look for an angel. Any kind, any anything may meet me out there. Mm -hmm. I had enough problems up in here. Everybody seen angels. I ain't seen none. Oh, an angel right there. Every minute I look, there's an angel. Why is he here? Because I really want to know if the angel is here, there's some deliverance that need to be taken. Yeah, Plays. Yeah. Angels are standing in the corner chilling with a cigar in his mouth. <laughs> describe the angel. Nobody could describe the angel. I just saw one. He came and he disappeared. But the Bible said, beware because you may... Entertain angels, what? Unaware. Oh, yeah. Never said the angel gonna come and disappear. Mm -hmm. They come in human form. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. They come in the, in human form. Mm -hmm. And so does the fallen angels come in human form. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. You gotta be careful. In the same manner, it's presumptuous for a person who is not called by God to go out and say that he is the Lord representative. There must be a divine encounter with the Lord before a person can be sent by the Lord. God must call the person and equip him before he goes forth. There must be an appointment by God. There must be an appointment. Now, everybody, nobody wants to stay for the appointment. Everybody just want to, oh, I heard the voice of God. But even if you heard God call you, he called Samuel at the age of 12, but he never sent him out, right? He called him at the age of 12, yeah. but he was not sent. Come on, somebody. Let's look at self-appointed leadership because this is what is going on in the black church. Can I just be truthful? It's in, it's in all churches, but majority of us. And when I preached this before, some people got mad when I was telling them because in majority of the churches I've been in, a lot of people been doing the mime ministry. How could you have a mime ministry when a mime is a demonic thing? This is what the homosexual did in the time of King Henry the first, King Henry the five, all these different, they had the mimers going on the, um, the little uh, uh, these were like little elf looking men, what do they call them from the movie Lords of the Rings uh -huh. the little troll looking midget ones, they will have them come around and, 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 and dance for the king and, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, what, what, she, what she was doing in John the Baptist yeah she was miming. Her ministry was also miming, and she also did that thing that one of us used to do here, that little, you know, in the moves. And then when she moved, the king was like, whoa. You know, that that seductive spirit. Miming is a way of seducing the people to the Bible said Jezebel seduced. Come on, somebody. Jezebel can be male or female. 
Jesus said in the book of Revelation, he said, you suffer that woman Jezebel to what? They let my people eat. They eaten. They eaten up all this mess. Yeah. We eat up everything we see in the church. We call everything ministry, the step ministry, the dance ministry. <laughs> Come on. And they move in with all these moves that we got in picked up in Africa. That spirits, familiar spirits and and necromancy and all that stuff goes wow. with it. But nobody wants to say nothing because, oh, it looks good. But it ain't God. And take off one of the O's. See the word good? And it's God. But everything that's good ain't God. I should pride myself for that. <laughs> a self-appointed leader take upon himself the authority and responsibility of a spiritual office into which he had not been divinely called. The man Korah is an Old Testament example of self-appointed leadership. Number 16 and 17 provides the background history to this story. Y'all know the story. And so they start talking about Moses. Amen? He said about Moses, he said, he caused others to rise up against existing spiritual leadership. He publicly criticized and questioned the existing leadership. He said, you take too much upon you seeing the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, lift ye up yourselves among the congregation of the Lord. Number 16 and 3. He accused leadership of what he himself was guilty. How many times have you met people like that in the ministry? Amen? He was not satisfied with the position that he had been given. And that's what's going on in the body of Christ. I'm not, a, I'm not satisfied with being a system pastor. I want to be the pastor. I don't want to be the, 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 the apostle no more. I want to be the chief apostle. I got to be in charge. And it's going to be my way. He was not satisfied with the position that he was given. He continually wanted more authority and a higher position. He continued to murmur against the existing leadership. You got to be careful, body of Christ. Amen? And y'all saw what happened to, to Korah, right? Y'all read it. The mm -hmm. ground opened. Moses yeah. told him, he said, who is with yeah. me? Y'all come on this side. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It was sad that even babies had to die because of Korah, because the Bible said the ground opened and mm -hmm. swallowed everything up. Babies, camels, yeah. oxes, everything went down in the ground. So that was self-appointed leadership. I'm trying to show y'all the different kind of leadership. Now, here goes man's appointed leadership. Because, you know, you hear this all the time. Do not touch God's anointed. Do his prophet no harm. Every minister likes to say this. Now, is everybody that sits in the pul pulpit is a minister or a prophet. Man appointed leaders claim to receive a call from God, but the call is by the authority of human vessels who are not speaking by the unction of the Lord. Have you not been in the, in the church and heard some stuff before, but you know it wasn't God? You seen somebody in position that you knew God did not call them? And you're trying to ask yourself like, my God, what was my pastor thinking? Amen. Yeah. Man appointed leadership is very common in the society today. Very strong. Man appointed leaders look toward the ministry as a professional. Amen. Look toward his career. It's not a career. Because there's you walk in between death and life every day. As a minister of Jesus Christ, you, you know. Who said you're going to go sleep like Abraham and be buried with your forefathers? This ain't. This is modern days we're living in. And the devil has intensified the, the eating. When Moses and Abraham and them boys was around, they ate different. Now we got all kinds of stuff in our food killing us already. 
If somebody want to kill you, just put something in your food. Yeah. It's just by the grace of God that we are still here. Amen? Amen. Are you all learning anything? Yeah. So man appointed leadership is Saul. And I try to tell people a lot of time, and people will say, well, you know, when David said touch, that he would not touch God's anointed, David knew that David respect leadership. He was saying, Saul is leader over the land. I would not touch him because God put him in the position. Right. God still allowed him because if God wanted to stop it, God could have stopped it. But the people chose Saul. It was not God that chose him. The people asked him. Because God was trying to give them the opportunity. He said, you sure you want him? Yeah, we want him. But you know, the time when you see a little scrawny minister come into ministry, you don't want, you want that, the one that's handsome and got his back all broad and walking, coming up cocky on the, on the pulpit. That's the one we want to hear preach with the finger waves all in his hair. <laughs> Grease, chicken grease running down his head, preaching about chicken and burgers. No anointing in the, in the message. Self-appointed leadership. Amen? So here goes the difference. Now we have God-appointed leadership. Amen? Amen? We will, the Bible is still, is still the handbook for the believers, setting the guidelines needed for all areas. God appoints leaders to function in a given capacity. They are God's choice, God's appointed and placed ministries. The following words appoint, separate, call, and send will provide scriptural insight into God himself calling his leaders. What does the word appoint mean? Maybe try to break it down. I'm trying to get it done. It's two classes in one. The Hebrew word, the Hebrew word for appoint means to oversee, to care for, to watch over. Amen? The word separate means, in Hebrew, means to set off by boundaries. And we talked about that word before. Amen? To appoint, to set aside. God calls you, you're set aside. You you're not you're not going to mingle with the with a lot of folks that you thought you were gonna be with. Mm -hmm. You're gonna start you're gonna try to fit in something and you'll find out that them people are different from you. They don't mm -hmm. want you around them, and God don't want you around them. And you're trying to figure out why why they don't want me around you. It's not that they don't want you around. Your anointing <coughs> is too strong for them. Good and evil can't stay in the same place. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God is appointed. He is separated now to call come. The word call means to cost a person to call out by name. Amen? Amen? God called Moses. The Lord called Samuel. Paul called to be an apostle. Amen? Amen. And Jesus straightway called the disciples in Mark 1 and 20. The word sin in Hebrews to be sent away for a specific reason. So if you're an apostle, you're a sent one. And, and God sent Peter on a specific mission as an apostle. And Paul was sent as, one was sent to what? The Jews and one was sent to the Gentiles, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, God had a work for both of them. But they were not on the, they were working for God's kingdom, but they both had different assignments. Amen? Amen. So we have to know our assignments. I know I can't sing. And you will not see me get up here on Sunday morning trying to <laughs> sing one of the beautiful songs one of y'all ladies could sing. I'm not doing it. Because some people will, well, Apostle, you need to. Uh, uh, the Lord will help. Uh uh. <laughs> yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. So, I'm trying to let's let's look at something. Let's look at uh, Christ is the head of the church. Amen. Christ is the head of the church. I think we may have done some of this before. 
And um, and the church, the body, is we get a measure of Christ. Mm -hmm. Just a measure. We get a little taste of him, and now we get the big head. Because the Bible says, that just if you have faith as a grain, we get a grain and we want the whole barley. That's all God has given us, a measure of it. Jesus, the Bible said, in the fullness of time, but we have not fulfilled what Jesus has fulfilled. We can't fulfill him. Even though he said, greater works he shall do, we take it as, oh, yeah, I'm going to do greater than Jesus. Does. Jesus was saying, you're going to have more time on earth to do more than I did because I had to go home to the Father at the age of 33. Come on, somebody. He didn't say, well, you're going to walk on water and you're going to speak to the ocean and all the sea going to go up in there. Most Christians, they are so uh, sick in their mind. It's been, oh, I'm going to be stronger than Jesus. You know, I'm going to be greater than Jesus. Because they heard him say, well, greater works. Greater works. you got more time to do the work. You you know, you're not going home at the age of 33. If I live to see 63, i got 30 more years than Jesus to do more works. Come on, somebody. Are y'all learning anything? That's chapter that, uh, I wanted to give that, that to you. I hope y'all enjoy that part of the session. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to give y'all the rest so we could um, hope y'all enjoy that. Amen? Amen. This part of the uh, teaching is called Church Leadership Background and Conflicts. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Church Leadership Background and Conflict. We have so many conflicts, and we talked about that earlier, especially in the five-fold ministry. Because everybody's, con the conflict comes from, I am more anointed than you are. Mm. I hear from God clearer than you do. Wow. And you know, the concept of me sitting down and praying longer than you don't make, necessarily let me hear from God more than you do. And then that's what the church has taught us. That you have to go in some secret place and tarry all night in the Holy Ghost to hear from God. And we just, you could sit in and tarry all night and hear from a demonic spirit that sounds like God. Because mm -hmm. if God chose you, you're going to hear from him. God could deal with you through dreams. He could deal with you through visions or just an audible voice. Amen? Amen. However he chooses to. Religious hierarchies, that's what we're going to talk about. Reproduce such anti-biblical ministry concept as the separation of clergy and laity. We have to go back to the early church to find the roots of today's conflict over leadership roles. The early church was organized in a way that left all members of each congregation play an active role in the church's life. Within her membership, the early church had a variety of people with different spiritual gifts that were profitable to the entire local body of believers. Now, we don't want that. We don't, in the local church, we don't want the nine gifts operating. We just want whatever gift we feel like this house needs. Amen? But it's, I, 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 Paul, I was telling the church that, that um, can the eyes and the, or the ears tell the head that they don't want them? Amen? Right, right. You know, the, I'm just giving you all an example that. You know, all parts of the body need each uh, the other part to function properly. Amen? Yeah. You get your arms, one of your hands chopped off, your body don't feel the same. It don't look the same with a missing, uh, missing uh, arm. Amen? The early church had... Uh, uh, had a variety of people with different spiritual gifts that were profitable to the entire local body of believers. The two main areas of gift function was those Christians who guided and labored in the Word of God and those who participated in the various congregational ministries of 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 11, which Paul speaks about, and Romans 12, 3 through 8. 
Everybody got that? 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, and Romans 12, 3 through 8. These portions of scriptures enumerated the various congregational ministries. In the church, though these verses do not provide a complete list of ministry, they give us a good idea of the, the divide, diversity of the gift congregational ministry. Number one is the word of wisdom. And I try to share with people that the word of wisdom, you know, is not prophecy. It flows with the prophetic gift because everybody get a word of wisdom and said, well, I just received a prophetic word. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's the same administration. But different ministries. Amen. Mm -hmm. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge is all run by the same Holy Ghost. But it's different branches that it comes from. Amen? Mm -hmm. The gift of faith, that's what I have. Amen? Mm -hmm. The gift of healing, that's one of my main gifts. The laying of hands. The working of miracles, that might be for you, one of y'all working in your evangelizing gifts. Some people are better in the street ministry than I am. That's evangelizing. If, I, if I, I'm, I'm probably good out there, too. I just haven't got the opportunity, but by me being an apostle, I could work evangelizing. Amen. The interpretation of tongues, working by the same spirit. Amen. Serving, working by the same spirit. Teaching, working by the same spirit. Exhortation, working by the same spirit. And we talked about some of this thing last week and giving, the spirit of giving, mm -hmm. working by the same prophecy, working by the same spirit. The discernment of spirits, working by the same spirit. Various kinds of tongues, working by the same spirit. Governing, working by the same, showing mercy. Amen? Working by the same spirit. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> I want to read something to you. The church began to desire local bishops to perform most of the work of the ministry because they had the most education. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Jesus did not call educated men. These men that he called was unlearned. The Bible said it, right? Remember they said, who are these unlearned men? They didn't go to school. They didn't go to no vintage Bible college or any Bible college. They don't know anything. So who are they to come and preach this gospel? But by the Holy Ghost. Is the greatest teacher. Amen? Amen. The church began to desire local bishops to perform most of the work of the ministry because they had the most education, which led to a governmental corpse of mostly bishops overseeing education. Mm. Doctrine, marriages, baptism, the communion table, it all started in Rome. The elders, the deacons, and even church properties and monies. Mm. Wow. The church began to look mainly in the bishop's office for all major teaching. Thus, the local elders were considered only teachers, while the bishop was considered as the joint apostle slash prophet. The true traveling ministry of separate apostles and prophets have receded into the background. Now we had to figure out well, that a bishop is not an apostle. Because that was the whole thing that the Roman church started. And now we have gravitated to that. We suck it up. Amen? Amen. Because we want to... Um, Trying to give y'all something else. Um, y'all enjoying the class? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody in here know what it means to serve? Because when you become a minister, 
You notice Paul always say, I'm, I am a minister and a servant. Amen? Your title don't change. Your office don't change. The higher you go, your servant gets closer to God. Amen? Amen. Leading by service. God wants to overthrow the false division between clergy and laity, along with its pitiful results, and restore the New Testament truth to ministry. We will not refer to church leaders as ministers because of God intend ministers to be in action rather than as ministry. In light of the Bible, only directives on the subject, this seems the most appropriate title for a position. This overturns today's confusion over function versus title, and it restores the understanding that God alone can establish ministry. But you know, if I say I'm a minister of Jesus Christ, to somebody out there, okay, the, oh, well, yeah, oh, I know you're a minister. They said, I'm an apostle. Oh, oh, my God, you're an apostle. I'm a bishop. Oh, my God, you're a bishop. Then, then the reverence come in, you know? But minister, we are all what? Ministers. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. The Bible said, are we not all ministering spirits mm -hmm. and the angels flames of fire? Come on, somebody. Yeah. We are all ministering spirits. No, the angels are ministering spirits, but we are, God said we are flame, we are the flames of fire. So we are the ones who carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Look at favor and um the word a servant. In Proverbs 14 and 35 said the king's favor is towards a wise servant. The Bible speaks about the unjust servant. We read that a lot of times in the Bible. It talks about servanthood a lot. Amen. A wise servant shall have the role rule over a son that causes shame and shall part off the inheritance among the brethren. Proverbs 17 and 2. In the Old Testament, the leader of God's people was, first of all, a servant of God and of his people. Servanthood went before leadership. Can I repeat that again? Yeah. Servanthood went before leadership and was a vital part of the leadership. See, if you have served in ministry with me, all of the Old Testament name below is described the servant of God and of others. I like this movie, one of my favorite movies, Is Braveheart. I don't know if y'all any y'all ever seen that movie. And um, I remember when Mel Gibson was betrayed in that movie. Amen. Remember they were supposed to help him, and the king from um, the Scottish king was supposed to help him, and then you know his father did what he did and he turned against him and and that's another story but I remember after he got he got beheaded that same one who betrayed him picked up the banner and he said those that have bled with Wallace come bleed with me that was the most powerful part of the movie because only a person that have bled with you is worthy of following you. Amen? If nobody have put sweat with you and bled a part of your life, can you trust them? A person that wants to bleed is like when Elijah told Elijah told Elijah, go on back home, keep running him away. But the man kept coming. The sincerity, the loyalty, the love, the honesty, yes. the pureness of heart. Oh. Amen? Amen. Amen. Servant to it. He didn't follow him. Okay. Oh, okay.
So when they went to the other church, however, the pastor was telling me they had a song Really, they, they, you have a choice. Um, you have a choice. Either you, is God testing you to see how you're going to react? Because a lot of us can't handle that kind of rejection. You rejected my anointing. Or it could be that you moved out of season. Amen? You moved out of season and then you got to start all over again. Because if you get fired from some job, then you got to go somewhere else and start back over. You, you know, you, if you had got a pay raise on your new job, you may not get that same amount of money that you had used to get, right? You had to start over with what that, whatever that job, the new job is paying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, it, it happens. It happens. But you, you have to have the wisdom to know, is this where God wants me to be at? Because it's not about your title no more. It's about humility. Amen? It, it's just about humility. Mm -hmm. So listen, Abraham, God's servant, the God's great man, God's servant, Genesis 26, Moses, God's servant. Joshua, Moses' servant. Caleb, God's servant. Samuel, God's servant. Elijah, God's servant. That's in 2 Kings 9 and 36. Isaiah, God's servant. These, these were all God's servant. These were all men that served before. David was a servant. Before he became a king. Amen. All the men that God chose. They were servants. Notice Saul was not. A servant to you. Just a king. Where did he serve at? Probably a bloodline of king. And then people just said. Well Saul fit the image. But how many times now we pick ministers. That look the part. Yeah. They look like a minister. They sound like a minister. They sound they could preach good. They could teach good. And, and he said, oh, yeah, we're going to make him the pastor of this church. We're going to make him the bishop of the church because they, 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 they fit the image. Amen? Yeah. But you have to understand the difference between servant from servant to leading. The Hebrew word for leader is nagid. It has servanthood as a base element in developing out of the base, setting forth an example to the people. The meaning to this Hebrew word for leader stands in interesting contrast to the Hebrew word for king. Though the Hebrew word for king, melech, was fairly neutral in meaning, it allowed the possibility of despotism. This is what Samuel warned the Israelite against in 1 Samuel 8, 9 through 18. When they asked for king, and that is what Saul's kingship degraded into. Do y'all heard it? Degraded? Nagid? N A G I Y D. Good teacher, right? By contrast, a Nagid leader has its its root, the picture of a man under authority. One who is subject to a higher power. And will fulfill the wishes of that power. That was the kind of ruler God wanted to give the people. Amen? Amen? A man would listen to his will and execute it faithfully with divine appointed authority. David, a man after God's own heart, was God's Nagid for Israel. Not Saul. Amen? Amen. Sure. Because I have some male minister friends, and they feel like they're not 
get a word from a man or a woman as the man or woman What's it for your life? I'm in agreement. You don't want to put on a word? I had to I, I had before, but I would, I, if the if the if my if I was sitting up on that pastor and he was a good pastor and he died, mm -hmm. and his and his wife had the same spirit as her husband, I would sit there. If she has a husband spirit, because if she has her husband spirit and he don't have a dominating spirit, and she has a Jezebel spirit, I'm finna go. Because a lot of people, as soon as their husband die. It's my church. She ain't saying nothing about her husband no more. It's my church. I'm going to run it how I want. My husband did. Yeah, that was on their way too. No. Off in the hotel. Yeah. Um, while they were in I don't know how that happened. That was something mm -hmm. else. I don't know. That's kind of weird, right? Yeah. I almost seemed like Satan set that up. Consequently, to be a captain, ruler, prince, governor, noble of the people of God. You have five things that God could cho choose you as. As a Nagin, you could be God's captain, you could be God's ruler, you could be God's prince, you could be God's governor or God noble. A person must first come squarely under the authority of the Almighty God. The root meaning of the Nagin contains another important element, to stand out boldly. To announce, to manifest. You know, you have these ministers now, they won't announce nothing. God's ministers, they're going to announce judgment. Amen? Mm -hmm. David was not perfect, but God said he was a man after his own heart. Mm -hmm. Now, he was God's enemy. He was David's enemy. And they ain't, no, ain't no coming around it. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can't be God's enemy. Uh, you, you, you got a preacher that's that is God's enemy. You know they coming against God and God's word, and you gonna sit there in the church under them? No. Time for you to get up out of there. It means to stand out boldly to announce the manifest. This is a natural complement to the action of receiving commands from the Almighty God. God's nagid. Receive both the commands of the King of Kings and then boldly stand towards to announce and manifest them. Mm -hmm. By extension, this carries the meaning of being a, an example to the people and how to follow the command of God. God's Nagid leader is the first to model the will of God for others to follow. He takes the forefront and leads by example, whether in battle with God's enemies, I said it earlier, or in establishing truth and justice in God's kingdom. Now, you can't be no soft-hearted, piggy, a uh, back riding minister that does mm -hmm. jump around and agree with everybody because you don't want to hurt nobody's feeling. You don't want to break friendships. You don't want to break covenants. All that is going to happen mm -hmm. when you are God's Nagid leader. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The shepherd leader. David, right? The shepherd leader is a beautiful illustration of the leader who goes before his people to prepare the way for them. He must go before God's people in his own experience and lifestyle so that he can lead them safely past dangers into good green pastures. Not your, not your um, leader that's leading you away from still waters. The Bible said, Jesus said, David said that he will lead you in what's by still waters. Amen. That lead you to drown. Right. Amen. So here's something that y'all may not learn yet. I'm going to tell y'all what it is. What the apostle does is the one that recognizes. Like that's what I do. I recognize what's going on in the church and try to fix it. The prophet adjusted. You know, the church cannot see clearly. And, you know, when you get into my age and your age, and, you, you know, they said, the people down at DMV said, you need to get on some 
<laughs> glasses. You're not seeing too good. So they give you them test glasses, right? That's when the prophet come in and he adjusts because he could see. Most of us are blind in the church. We can't see nothing. We just hallelujah and amen. The real prophets now, come on. I ain't talking about that fake prophet because all he, he sees is, is money all day long. But the true prophets, you come in to adjust. You know, you got a binoculars and you got to adjust it, right? So you can see that good vision. So that's what the prophet does. The evangelist now, she or he repairs what's broken. That's what they come in to do. They repair what the devil done tore up. People, that's what I need some evangelizing in the church. Mm -hmm. Somebody that go out there and evangelize and bring some souls in. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Where my evangelist at? Mm -hmm. And the pastor, what well, the pastor's job is to do is to equip. The Bible said equip the saints. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the teacher trained. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you do that well when you got them babies. You have to train them. And even potty train them, because even Christians have to be potty trained. Amen? Amen. So the teacher train in place. The teacher knows what student is learning and what student ain't, right? Amen. That's what the teacher's job is. That's a very powerful, tough job to do, because you got some stubborn mules. Amen? Amen. So that's the fivefold ministry right there. We are the people of God, and together we have the work of ministry and the building up of the body. These governmental ministries are given to the body of Christ to place and adjust members of the body so that the body itself can be the work of the ministry. Governmental ministries furnish, provide, dress, array, and gird the body so that the body may function what? Properly. Is an obvious distinction between governmental and congregational ministries, which we must not overlook. The two ministry groups to have a difference in function and a difference in authority. But the terms clergy, listen, and laity have no legitimate application here. Both governmental and congregational ministries have an important function in the house of the Lord. They differ in regards to function, but have equal importance in regard to their necessity and significance in the body of Christ. I'm not needed more than you are. Amen? And I'm not going to be judged more. Guess who get judged more? The teacher. Because you're the one who work with the doctrine. Amen? <laughs> I'm trying to close. I'm going to give you about 10 more minutes. Y'all good? Yeah, we started late, but we're going to try to be. In Ephesians 4.12, the use of the verb to perfectly helps in this picture the function of governmental ministries. The word perfect is the Greek word katertismos. K-A-T-A-R-T-I-S-M-O-S, -S, which means to complete thoroughly, to repair, or to adjust. That's the prophet. The Greek word is katertimus, K-A-T-A-R-T-I-A-T-I-S-T-I-S-M-O-S. I'm sorry. It's hard to pronounce that word anyway. K-A-R-T-I-M-O-S. Got it? Yeah. Can you say it? Yeah, you say it good. The next word is artimus. Means to repair or adjust as a craftsman. Amen. Looks like and uh, one of the words that, that uh comes from the word artismus is the word mending. And here goes the scripture with it, Matthew 4 and 12, 21. It says, oh, Artemis is spelled A-R-T-I-S-M-O-S. 
And going on from thence, he saw of the two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father. God, you got the same name as the daddy. Mending their nets. That's what the word. Um, so Jesus already picked up on their spirit. They said, these men know how to mend. You know, they have to mend the nets. So this is how Jesus knew that these men were patient men. And because it takes, back then it takes a lot of work to go fishing. You know, to create that big old net, these men there, with a craftsmanship. That's what it, it really, it takes craft to work that net, then throw that net out in the water. And that's why them disciples were so, uh, the Bible said they toiled all night and caught nothing. Could you imagine after you done created that big old net, and threw it out there and caught nothing. And Jesus telling him, he said, Peter, y'all throw it on the other side. That's awesome. And they said the net broke when they pulled it. Come on, somebody. The net broke. That's how much fish they caught. Because Jesus is what? He's a mender. Amen. He's a fixer. So that's what the evangelist does, re repairs. Amen? Another word I want to talk about tonight is the word fitted. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to finish. Romans 9 and 22 says, The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Here the Greek word artismos is used to describe the fitting or forming of clay into vessels by a potter. God is the potter who make vessels of honor, vessels of wrath. A person can respond to the Lord as a pliable clay or he can reject the hand of God's shaping. So we got to make sure that God's shape. He's the one who molds us and shape us. Don't try to shape yourself. Don't try to follow other people preaching a pattern because you don't know who is molding and shaping them. They may be molding and shaped by somebody else and not the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's look at this word. In 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, perfectly joined together. Paul said, Now I beseech you, brethren, that there be no divisions among you, but ye be perfectly joined together. That's what we've been praying for here. Come on. That the net don't break no more. If it's going to break, let the overflow come. Let them break down the doors coming in. Paul said, Be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Come on now. I need you. You need me. Mm -hmm. Amen? It goes another word, prepared. I like that. Hebrews mm -hmm. 10 and 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrificing often, though what that's not. He said, it's not what I want. I'm not here for sacrificing often. That's what Jesus says. Amen? Mm -hmm. But a body, though, has prepared for me. He's mm -hmm. looking for your body. Bulls, bullocks, cows, oxen, them days are over with. Yeah. He's looking for a body. Mm -hmm. Paul says, even if I sacrifice myself or, uh, or commit my body to be burned, it's not it's not worth a thing. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Right. Prepare. Jesus said, I'm looking for a body. Hebrews 10 and 5. The next word is framed. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hebrews 11 and 3, that the frame. We have frames in every building. If the frame is what fit the structure together. Amen? Yeah. The word of God is what frames and keep us moving. Amen? It's the blueprint of the building. That's what keep you and I going because we remember what God says in his word. And one day we will be with him in paradise. Yeah. We will be with him. That this home is not your home. Amen. That you will you'll be taken away one day to be absent from the body. Is to be present with the Lord. Amen? Yeah. So don't be concerned about titles. 
lifestyles, yeah. rich and famous, yeah. mysteries, yeah. revelation. All those things are good. But you need love. Yeah. It covers a multitude of sin. Yeah. And that's what the church needs. We need to go back. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation that Jesus uh, spoke to one of the churches. He said, go and redo this. Go do this over. Go back to your first law. Amen. You know, we like to say, well, I've done this in your name and I've done that in your name. But Lord said, uh -uh. I'm not looking for that. Amen. Let's talk about discernment. And then we're going to close up. Y'all enjoying this? Yeah. One of the most important functions of the governmental ministry in the church is to have spiritual eyes that, that can discern who are called to a particular work in the body. The church missed this. And to be able to release them to that work. To show the importance of this necess necessary function of leadership, we need only to look at to the Lord Jesus also performed this ministry while on earth. Jesus had the spiritual eye to see in a marred vessel, the potential that could be developed for use in the kingdom of God. We can't just judge people from their lifestyle or how they live in or where they came from. Amen. Now you and I would have not looked at the woman that had five husbands and one at home. We'd be like, uh-uh, we don't want her in the church. She's going to come in here and sleep with everybody. Amen. First thing, man. let the door hit you. We don't want you in here. See how? No discernment. The woman may come in here for change. She come in here for a miracle. But because we know her reputation, we ready to jump. The bishop ready to jump. He grabbed two tail to two of his prophets. I covered the sister real tight. And, you know, but the three prophets that are prophets that are covering up might be more Dress more unclean than that woman. Yeah. They are not covered. Yeah. Cause they ain't got no husband at home. Come on. Come on now. Yeah. The well, Bible God. says, God. if you, that's what Paul was saying. Go home and talk to your husband. Don't have no conversation with me. Mm -hmm. Get your house in order. Mm -hmm. Cause if you ain't got no covering, keep your mouth shut. Yeah. That's what Paul was saying. Yeah. If you want to have a conversation, have it with your husband. Because yeah. suddenly you must have a Jezebel spirit because you don't want to talk about order, but you want to stand up in the church and tell me, I'm not going to sit down because I am a prophetess. Yeah. That's what Paul was talking about. No discernment. But thank God that Jesus had the discernment mm -hmm. to know that this woman, he did not embarrass her. Mm -hmm. and that's what we do. We look at people when they come into church and we look at, oh my God, she come to church like that? Maybe that's all she had. Yeah, Amen. Exactly. Yeah. Woman that had five husbands. Yeah. So imagine if Jesus had told me, marry her. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. She been with five men. And so the Lord told me, how many women have you been with in your life? Amen. Yeah, he'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. he'll, he know how to fix you. I'm trying to finish. To show the importance of this necessary function of leadership, we need only to look at the Lord Jesus who also performed this ministry while on earth. Jesus had the spiritual eyes to see in a marred vessel the potential that could be developed for, for use in the kingdom of God. He had the wisdom to look past the many defects in the vessel. Listen to that. And to discern the treasure buried beneath its surface. Ain't that something? He had the wisdom to look past the many defects in the vessel. I'm he's talking to me right there. And to discern the measure buried beneath his surface. Because when I was out there in the streets, I'm sure all my family members, you know, when I got locked up, they probably said, Wilma, that child gonna be dead real soon. He's gonna be in jail again. But you know, God saw something. There that he could use. Amen. While others were not seen, Jesus already died for me. He even died for you. And he knew what he had to do to make you convert to him. Amen. 
to release the numerous ministries in the body of Christ that are now that are now lying dormant. Church leaders must function with a spiritual discernment like Christ. It will happen no other way. Amen? And that's what we did here. Some of us was always doing this about somebody else that came to church. But you can't talk about the pot if the candle was dressing the same way. Can I get an amen? Amen. The pot and the kettle were dressed in, like, how could you accuse somebody that they were dressing whorish when you were telling them they look nice? Exactly. And then behind, when they when they get it, around other people, he said, You're, she a slut, she a whore. But why not pull that sister to the side yeah. and say, with wisdom, you know, next time wear something a little bit you know, over your knees, you know, because, you know, they got some men here that are not, you know, can't handle that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's true, you know. But but taking a sheet and covering up everybody ain't the answer. Because you've seen women come to church all the time and they covered up. But you can't cover up sin. It is what it is because sin goes from the heart. We could cover the flesh, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's what the nation of Islam does. They, the women cover up all their clothes and hide all their body parts. But if this is not fixed, mm-hmm. then God said, I refuse you. Cover up all you want. Yeah. You know, you have some people in the apostolic church in Jamaica. These are the ones that... that, that, that uh, wear all the long dresses and no lipstick and 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 they uh got them got them things over their head. What they call them? Dollies. And I hate them churches. Because they had that judgmental spirit. Women can't wear pants and you know, can't wear makeup and you better not go in there wearing no uh braids or nothing like that. Get put out for that. Because they don't have no wisdom. And put you out. Amen. I could still come. With the dolly over my head. With the long white dress. Yeah. And I could be the biggest whore in the church. Mm-hmm. But because I could cover it up. It's, oh no, no. She's the woman of God. She's always covered up. You better watch her. The one that, 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 that got all her skin showing. Might not be the problem. Mm-hmm. It's the one that ain't got no skin showing. See, that's how the devil works. <laughs> right? But we had that here at one time. We had, you know, just the people bickering about other folks and their clothing. Yeah. But you can't tell the pot about the kettle when both of them are burnt black. Okay. Amen. And that's what we need in the body of Christ is wisdom. The Bible said, with all that, get in, get understanding. Yeah. Don't jump to conclusion and, you know, beat people down. Ministry must learn to look past the natural dif- dif- differences and see the spiritual potential that others have in the Lord. Isaiah 11, 3 and 4 says, contain the prophetic word which was fulfilled in Christ's ministry. It states, he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Mm-hmm. Amen? Yes. Don't we do that? Yes. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Mm-hmm. And most people, they come in the church <clears throat> and they do all this whispering and stuff. And then yes. when they start whispering, you hear it. And guess what you do? You judge it too. Because yeah. you hear it from the source that you think is valid. Yeah. And so that goes around in a circle. Amen? You got to be careful. Yeah. Use wisdom. There might be a lying spirit releasing all that stuff mm-hmm. in the air. Amen? Uh, is this good? Yeah. I'm almost done. Jesus did not judge after the wisdom in the inside of men, but after the knowledge Everybody say knowledge Knowledge. and discernment of God. Mm -hmm. My God. 
Look at Levi, the tax collector. We're going to try to get done. Tax collectors were very unpopular in New Testament times. Mm -hmm. Taxes were not paid by mail <laughs> as today, but were collected by imperial officer as a daily routine. This imperial officer was usually a part of the custom authority of the land. Hatred of paying duty to the Roman government was as it were. And you got ministers now, they don't even want to pay their, I guess, everybody want tithes and offering, but if there was a tax on the church, you would find that so many ministers have not paid their taxes. Okay. Amen? They want to get, but nobody wants to give. Mm -hmm. Amen? It was engraven in every very human nature of the people who were subject to Rome. In Judea, the tax collector was a representative object of the hatred of the Roman Empire. The tax itself was viewed as sinful. If the tax collector was a Jew, as was Levi, he was considered to be a rebel and a renegade in the eyes of his countrymen. It's so amazing how Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, when you go down to the, uh, to the sea, he says, uh, the first fish that come up, he's going to have a coin in his mouth. He said, Peter, go pay your taxes. Jesus didn't say, go pay my taxes first. Notice what he said. He said, Peter, you go pay your taxes, yeah. then pay mine after. Awesome. Yeah. You think, wow. which which pastor going to know that his house didn't get foreclosed? And I'm going to go and pay another person taxes on their house. It may not be enough left. But you won't be thinking about me. I gotta pay my taxes. In case there's not enough money left to pay that that person's taxes. Who does that? Uh, but love. Uh, we can't question our how God does stuff, right? Yeah. In spite of all this, the wisdom of God was at work against the wisdom of men. Jesus saw Levi's potential for apostleship. Listen, listen to that. And for the authority, the author, the authorship of one of gospel, of the gospel's accounts. Mm. Matthew's gospel, Jesus had spiritual insight to release the ministry of those who were unloved and those who had the least external promise of successful ministry. Sound like us right here. Jesus was not bound by human discernment or approval. He was not judging after the sight of his natural eyes, nor the hearing of his natural ears. Similarly, the leaders of the New Testament church today should be set free from the externalities of worldly judgment. They must begin to choose potential leaders according to spiritual discernment. I'm almost done. James and John. Jesus also had the spiritual eyes to call James and John out of their trade as natural fishermen. Into the ministry of spiritual fishermen, James and John did not have theological training or worldly recognition. Mm -hmm. But Jesus had the spiritual eyes to call them into fruitful ministries in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Paul, Jesus also called the ch and changed Saul, the persecutor of the early church, into Saul, the apostle to the needy Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Give God some praise. Give Him the glory. If y'all enjoy this teaching today, I pray that the Lord has blessed you. And, and um, man, those that are able uh, to tell somebody about this channel, like and share. And we'll see you for our next two classes soon. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.